You could be the best dentist in the world with your hands, but if you can't communicate effectively with confidence to your patient, if your patient can't sense that you as a clinician are confident to carry out whichever plan you're advising, then guess what? The patient will not go ahead. And that's a disservice to the patient because you, you have your heart in the right place. You've trained for this. You've been on additional courses. But if you can't convey that to the patient, then it's an absolute waste. Hello, Peter Surati. I'm Jazz Galati. Welcome to this interference cast, this non-clinical interruption to help you grow as a dentist and do more dentistry on the right patients and get better outcomes. That's what it's all about with Petrusive as has evolved over the last three years. The key word of this episode, the episode title, I, I really purposely picked it, is recommend, right? Recommending treatment plans with confidence. And I think the word recommend is so, so key because it's something that you, as a clinician, you've earned the right, and you'll, you'll see later in this episode why I use these specific words. You've earned the right. You've done their full examination. You've got all this training behind you. Now you can make a recommendation to a patient. And I think a lot of dentists are guilty of not recommending. What I mean by that, I'll just expand a bit, is what if you've just finished your examination and instead of recommending something to a patient, instead of that, you are just splurging out. We can do a filling, we can do a sandwich, we can do a crown, we can do an onlay, we can do this, that and the other. And then really you give your patients choice fatigue and you're not really guiding them, you're not advising them, you're basically like trying to give them all this dental knowledge and letting them decide for themselves. There's something not quite right about that and the beauty of the word recommend is it empowers you, the dentist, to use all that information that you've gathered during the consultation to come up what is the best plan for that patient. I'm joined today by Prav Solanki. He's now a good friend of mine. He helped us to put together the occlusion course, occlusion basics and beyond. We'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. So I've got to know him a lot more in the last year. And I can say this guy is an absolute genius. Now he's come on the podcast before on IC023, where we talk about non-clinical growth, your relationships, time management, all these wonderful things. So if you haven't listened to that, do check it out. But today is about you as a clinician, how you can become more confident in communicating with the patients about what is the best plan for them. And what I love about this episode, and so many takeaways shared, and you put together a one-page PDF summary for all premium members of the podcast. So protrusive.app is website, or download the app on the Play Store or App Store, become a premium member for the cost of a Nando's per month, and you get access to all these premium summaries and CPD questions, etc., etc. But Prav talks about trust, right? Like we make a recommendation, we've earned that right, and it's based on a relationship of trust between you and the patient. Now, when I listen to this episode again to come up with this intro outro and guide the team on how we can deliver a really educational experience for you guys listening and watching thank you so much now when it comes to trust prav was referring to a trust between you and the patient but i want to introduce one more facet into this right i want to introduce the concept of trusting yourself I feel like a lot of young dentists, they doubt themselves and therefore they don't trust themselves to give the best treatment plan available. So I want to extend this definition. So yes, sales, we talk about you know dirty words, sales and whatnot, and why we need to embrace it when we're recommending treatment plans. But it's not just the patient trusting you, but it's you trusting yourself that with the information that you had available at the time, with the training and knowledge that you have, that you really genuinely chose the best plan for the patient that you could and recommended their options. But ultimately, you want to make a recommendation. I cannot stress this enough. And so a big part of this episode about making recommendations. If you just literally start making recommendations, if you're not already making explicit recommendations to patients, you will see your treatment plans skyrocket in terms of acceptance and this podcast will be worth this, you know, four or five minutes that you're in already. Just the whole five minutes of this podcast will be worth everything and more. And maybe this introduction will be all you need from this podcast to really thrive and grow as a clinician. Now, the other themes that we cover in this episode are, do you need to write letters to your patients? And if so, what should that look like? There's a specific format. Those who like to do letters, you know, Prav is very clear on, okay, if you're going to do letters and make sure you do this one specific step. So we talk a lot about that. As I've already touched on, how can you give the patients all their options without choice fatigue, without overwhelming your patient and just confusing them? We discussed the choreography of the ideal consultation and the treatment plan delivery. 
And lastly, how we utilize something called Loom. Loom is a software that we use that me and Prav are both passionate about and how I use it a lot in my communication with my patients. And it's almost replaced letters or it's the precursor to letter. Because think of it this way, right? Letters take a long time to do. If you're going to do it properly, they do take a long time to do. But a video for me, I just hit record. I go through my patient's photos and whatnot. Uh, and then once they've seen that video and they want to definitely go ahead, then I can send them their letter. I haven't wasted my time creating this beautiful letter uh, and then the patients are, oh yeah, I'll think about it kind of thing, right? So by making this video, it's a wow factor. Patients are like, wow, he, the, the, this dentist sent me a video and this dentist was highlighting all these things and this is amazing service. And then when they go ahead with a plan, it gives you the reassurance that, okay, you're going to spend a bit more time now to put their letter together, but it's worth it because now they've accepted the treatment plan because you've covered everything so beautifully in your Loom video. So in the last part of the podcast, we talk about that as well. Now, just before we join Prav Slang, in this killer episode, I just want to make an announcement that me and my wife uh, have had baby number two. We've introduced to the world Sihan Singh Gulati, uh, and we're just so, so made up, so happy. Uh, you know, I always worried that will I be able to love my second child as much as I love my first child, right? But the moment I saw him, the moment I met him, the moment I held him in my arms, it was just so euphoric. And like, it's like your heart gets split into two. So each child uh, gets a piece of you. And so it's a very, very happy time in the Gulati family and I thank you so much for your well wishes but I just want to share this news as a, as a personal thing but I just want to share it with you guys because I know many of you were with me over three years ago almost four years ago now when my firstborn was born I talked about him on my podcast very in the early days and now there we are uh, baby number two has come along so Sehan Singh Gulati has entered the world and I'm just so happy that I just want to share that with you anyway let's join the main episode with Prav Solanki Prav Solanki, welcome back to the Protrusive Dental Podcast. We last had you on non-clinical growth for dentists. And I tell you, Prav, I've had so many messages saying that this was absolutely brilliant. It's really opened their minds uh, to all those things. And you actually influenced me so much, I get now quarterly blood tests done to, to check my own personal dashboard of my health. So <laughs> welcome back, my friend. How are you? Um, I'm, I'm great. And, and thanks for having me, Jazz. It's, it's always a pleasure to come back and talk to you. And yeah, it's, it's always a two-way learning experience whenever I speak with you, whether it's about this or, or, or something else, right? Whether, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about the best occlusion course on the planet or we're just talking about patient communication, right? There's, there's, there's always learning points. But, but today's going to be a topic I think is very, very close to my heart. Um, and it's how we can influence um, the decision making that patients make in a, we've got to preface it with this, right? In an ethical way. I don't, I don't think anyone listening to this would ever do it in a unethical way um, but it's how we can feel ethical from a from a mindset perspective um, which is important Prav, I get messages from young dentists all the time. And when I cast back myself, you know, six, seven years ago, when I was like just two, three years out, and the biggest dilemma I had was entering private practice and just not feeling confident enough in my own skill sets or my mindset to, to charge patients. And I, and I often ha I went through all these dilemmas that young dentists go through, which is a lack of confidence because of lack of experience. And that feeds into it. Uh, and also, uh, which I think would be great. I actually literally had a message yesterday from an Australian dentist uh, you know, asking about how to tackle that. So at the end, maybe we can get your advice. But if you're not very experienced, how can you actually then be confident enough to, you know, in that inverted commas, sell a treatment plan? So we'll, we'll talk about that. Mm. But I also uh, fell into the the really bad habit or just really bad zone of diagnosing someone's wallet, right? You never want to do that. So, uh, and, and I know dentists do it all the time. I speak to dentists all the time and say, well, uh, yeah, I didn't want to give this uh, more expensive plan because I didn't think the patient might be able to afford it. Like that's, I think we can agree. Everyone's probably nodding their head, right? Yeah, that, that's the worst thing you could do. Every patient Happens deserves the, the best. Uh, so we have so much to talk about because you could be the best dentist in the world, but if you can't communicate your ideas, if you can't make a recommendation, key word there, which we'll talk about, we were just talking before, we hit record you know you won't do that beautiful dentistry if you've got the best hands ever so there's a there, there's a lot to be said about this so i guess where to start prav is we were talking before we hit record is sales is a dirty word and i think we've covered filthy, a little bit man. of the theme but filthy. filthy disgusting so how you know should are we selling to our patients or you know in healthcare is is selling allowed jazz i think it comes down to what you believe selling is right in your head in your mind if you believe that selling is a dirty word, if you believe talking about money is one of those things that perhaps, you know, you've got an idea in your mind what the value of what you're going to deliver is, but you're making preconceptions about that patient that 
crikey, if I recommend this and I recommend that, what, what's it, are they going to be able to afford it? And, and you're making judgments on their behalf, right? And, and I think as healthcare providers, as professionals, we've got a duty of, of care, but also clarity of communication to be able to explain all the options to the patients, all the price points to the patients, and guide them on where we think the best solution is for them. You know, the old, you know, if you were my daughter, if you were my son, all that sort of stuff. And because they're looking for a recommendation, right? And and, and mm-hmm. so, mm-hmm. Jazz, we were talking earlier and I, and I talked about a, a mini course I delivered for a, for a group of full mouth reconstruction dentists, right? And they all came to this course and then one, one of the delegates from the course went away and, 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 and it was very clear in his mind that he was he was going to go away and execute, right? I met him two days later at a, at a near dent event and he said, Prav, I've sold two cases north of £15,000, right? I'm scratching my head thinking, WTF, right? What, what, what happened? Yeah, because I'm trying. But, to but this is someone you. This is someone who has never a sold treatment plan. Okay, I mean, we, let's just use that term. It's a dirty word, selling a treatment plan. But let's just accept. But once you change your mindset, that it's okay to say that. But he'd never done that before. Predominantly NHS dentist who was upselling to a patient who'd come in for essentially an NHS checkup. He'd done a discovery process in this patient's mouth, presented what the options are and sold two plans north of £15,000 inside a week of us having that little course together, right? So I was intrigued, right? I was like, what the hell went on here? What, what did you take away? I, I really wanted to know what, what he walked away with. And he said, Prav, it was really easy. Your definition of sales changed my mind about everything, gave me the confidence. He said the other seven and a half hours of the day, yeah, it was good. But it was just that one <laughs> pivotal moment when you said to me, it's what your definition of sales is, right? And we all know that, like we go to a course and we have one takeaway moment or yep. one thing we want to take away, implement and go and execute it. And, and he did that beautifully. Um, and so the definition of sales... Let's hear I, it. Let's hear it. Drum roll. Say to us is, is, is the definition of sales is earning the right to make a recommendation, okay? So when you're selling to a patient, you're earning the right to make a recommendation to that patient and that recommendation and that right to uh, the right that you've earned is based on a relationship of trust that is all sales is so if you sit back and tell yourself that mantra now that sales is earning the right to make a recommendation to this patient and that recommendation is based on a relationship of trust and there happens to be an exchange of money that happens when you take my services up, right? Okay, but you trust me, we've built some trust, I'm making a recommendation, and by building this trust, I have a right to give you this recommendation and give you my opinion. That is it. Mm -hmm. Can can we break it down? Because I I love that, and I I think my enthusiasm, when when you first shared it to me, was like, yes, I love this, I love this, we need to get this out to everyone. But uh, one thing we didn't do is, let's break the different components of this, right? So earning the right. Is that, are you earning the right by just doing that examination? You've, you've, you're the dentist, you've got your BDS, right? Or DD, you know, DDS, whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. You've done the checkup, you've got the expertise. You are the one with the expertise. You are the one with the expertise of their mouth because you've done a thorough examination and you've diagnosed. So is, is that what you mean by earning the right? It's a really interesting question. You know, I, I'm going to digress. I'm going to come back to it. I'm, 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 I do this a lot. You know, I always say in my own practice, patients have to earn the right to get a free consultation in my practice. You can't just walk mm-hmm. into my practice and earn a free consultation. You have to earn, you have to earn the right to walk into my practice for a free appointment, right? I know a lot of people don't even do free consultations, whatever, right? You know, works for some, doesn't for others. Um, But what is that, right? How do you earn that, right? And there's certain criteria that you need to meet. Okay. I'm uh, thinking, I'm, I'm going to second guess you. They need to send you the photos. They need to fill in some forms. They need to give you their email. They need to follow you. I don't know, so, so something like that to, to make it you know, some sort of return. For us, it's really simple, right? Patient comes in for a free consultation. We have a conversation. They walk out and they thought they could get their teeth straightened for a thousand quid. You're doing nobody any favors. Nobody any favors, right? Because my time as a clinician, I've just given it for you when, when there was definitely a mismatch of where the value is, right? It's not the patient's fault that they thought they could get their teeth straightened for a thousand quid. Don't don't blame them. It's whoever's passing that information in between. So somebody gets to book into my clinic, they need to hit minimum criteria. Number one, they need to know the price. Really, Mm -hmm. really important. They need to know the price 
and they need to know the range, okay? So we always say, look, if you're coming in for Invisalign treatment, our prices range from three to five thousand pounds. Most patients sit slap bang in the middle, but that's what you're looking at. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then they need to get an idea of who they're dealing with. So maybe one or two little USPs about the dentist, right? Where Invisalign is becoming a commodity now, right? What is different about having Invisalign at our practice? So price point, a little bit about us, a deposit. Yeah. So even mm -hmm. though it's a free consultation, I'll take thirty pounds off you, and the first thing that'll happen, I'll whack it straight back on your card when you walk through the door, right? So if they're willing mm -hmm. to put, you want to up the stakes to of quality, just increase the value of that deposit. You know, if you want to take thirty mm -hmm. pounds, take a hundred pounds, fifty pounds, whatever, right? And you and, and you and you'll increase that filter of quality coming through your door. And then finally, you want to understand what they know about that treatment. Okay. Now, there's the whole other stuff about, you know, building rapport, learning about, learning about their why now, what's the pain points, what could they do before, what, what how couldn't they do, what would they like to do, wave a magic wand and all that razzmatazz, right? But what do they know about this treatment? And often when you ask them that, you will get an idea of have they been for other consultations somewhere? If they have, mm -hmm. bit of a red flag, but also an opportunity for you to say, so what is it that Dr. Smith didn't deliver to you that you want from me okay but mm -hmm. why didn't mm -hmm. you proceed with treatment there and by the and way that's a very fair question which i think many dentists might shy away from but they come this far now you know it's worth asking but all this while you're saying all these wonderful things Prav, and everything every piece of information you get from that patient serves a purpose and a value uh, and especially you know them knowing the fees it's just so, so so important before they come on but what does this look like is this from a uh, email questionnaire is this your treatment coordinator going on zoom how a phone call okay right so you're making the phone sound universal fine for the phone first phone call mate telephone conversation I mean, that's, you know, often, and it's not always the first point of communication, right? Because in today's day and age, sometimes we're having conversations over voice notes. Sometimes we're having conversations over DMs, social messages, this, that, and the other, right? What's really important, depending on who you're communicating with, I think it's important for us as businesses today, because, you know, we, we as well as healthcare professionals, we are running businesses. If you're an associate, you're running your own business within a business. I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. But... We need to adjust our communication style and methods of communication in line with what your patient or your client wants in terms of their communication preferences. So if I've, mm -hmm. let, let's say I get someone who gets in touch with me and, 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 and they message me on Facebook, I will message them back on Facebook. We'll have a little bit of it, but then I'll bring them into the fold of what our onboarding process is, right? Whether it's email or whatever, they'll share email. If someone sends me a voice note, I'll voice note them back, yeah? Mm -hmm. If someone sends me a voice note and I want the detail of that voice note to sit on the screen, yeah, I'll request that and I'll tell them why I need it on the screen, yeah? Because sometimes mm -hmm. I might be going back and referring to that. Yeah, but our patients... So this is receptionists or treatment coordinators who are doing the phone uh, or the pre Because essentially, this is pre-qualifying someone. Yeah, so we, we have... Um, I, I, given, given whatever title you want, right? Every practice, once again, different business structure. But, you know, I'm not going to dictate here. It needs to be a receptionist. It needs to be a TCO. Some practices don't have TCOs. Um, the definition of a TCO is far and wide as, as, as far as I'm concerned as well. But in, in my practice, um, it's Kerry, our, our lead ninja. And, and so her responsibility is overall patient communication to get somebody to come in and attend a consultation or an assessment, whether that's a paid assessment or a complimentary consultation. Her job is to get someone through the door that hits a certain level of criteria, all those different points that we discussed. And so earning the right to make a recommendation based on trust that we went on earlier, mm -hmm. Kerry starts that relationship. It's not just the mm -hmm. dentist, right? And so part of that course that we spoke, that, that, we deli that I delivered that day, um, one of the questions I asked the associates is, how many of you have had a conversation with, call it receptionist, lean ninja, TCO, whatever, right? How many of you have had a one-to-one -one with the person that answers the phone on your behalf speaks to your potential patients about you and your services and what instructions have you given them about what you want delivered when that patient lands in your chair and and and, and it was at that point you know it, you, that was a real rabbit in the headlights moment 
Okay. Huge. Perhaps. I think most dentists are completely guilty of this, especially when they go on a course, right? And and they, we do it to our nurses as well, Perhaps We go on a course, right? We've done all these techniques, which is completely fundamentally, you know, switches everything on its head compared to what you used to do. Uh, and we start doing it. And then the nurse is like looking at us like, wait, this is completely different to how he's been doing it the last five years. When did this happen? Why did this happen? Because nurses, they, they crave consistency. Uh, and so we owe it to our nurse to say, actually, I'm doing it this way because some studies have shown that this is a better way to do it or there's a more efficient way to do it and, and get them involved. But yes, reception. If you're starting to offer, you know, orthodontic solutions, which you weren't before, you need to really you owe it to your front of house team, let's call them, to, to, to have that sort of, uh, in, you know, enthusiasm that you have. Basically, that, that needs to be passed on to the front of house team. And, and I, I feel embarrassed that I've been treating TMD for a while. I get referrals from all over the country to treat it. Uh, and because we have certain, we have, we've got a morning team and an evening team, right? Because it's a, a shift pattern. Yeah. Next week is our first ever joint meeting. Every single receptionist, uh, even who's not supposed to be, usually be there, is going to be there. So we can just talk about how to handle these queries and what actually happens in a console. And they're desperate for this. Don't wait for the meeting, right? So th- this, this, is the, this is the one that... Have the same thing, right? So the the, the next rebuttal I get when I, when I when I release that statement is, oh, senior management, we don't have meetings, we don't all get together, blah blah blah, all the rest of it, right? Is there a moment during the during the week where that team member and you are on the same lunch? Could you take that person out for a coffee? Do you have to wait for that official sort of meeting box block whatever to, to to appear that's never going to happen hasn't happened in the last three months isn't going to happen in the next three months mm-hmm. or do you do you create that yeah um, and, and and so there are, there are pockets of time and opportunities in which and, and and they will get so much value out of that the, the other thing if there's four other dentists in that practice and you're the one giving the time to that person yeah preferentially you, you're going to get the patience that is so true that it will so happen. True. It will happen. I'm not saying that that's, you know, an ethical way to influence things or whatever, but but it will happen, right? They will have their favorites and whatnot. But what's really important is that, you know, if, if, if you approach your, your receptionist person answering the phone and you say, right, okay, so there are three things I'd like every patient who potentially wants to book with me to know about Jazz Galati. Yeah. He runs the most educational, world's best podcast in dentistry. Okay, that's listened to by several thousand or tens of thousands of dental professionals, whatever that number is, right? He also teaches other dentists, right? So this thing, what you're coming in for, yeah? Hundreds of dentists have learned these techniques from Jazz. The great news is you're coming straight to the teacher himself, right? And then whatever the third thing is, right? He's really gentle, caring, and you don't have, you don't need to be nervous about anything. You're gonna, everything's going to be just all right when you meet Jazz, yeah? Um, and what was the response like from the delegates? Because you taught this on the on the course. Like, listen, you train your reception team to give some information a- about you. Yeah. So look, I, I hate to say you get two different types of delegates, right? But you you get you get those who just sort of like that ain't going to happen, and you get those who are furiously scribbling notes and saying. I am going to, you know, there's a, there a lady called Sania on, 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 on the course and she was very clear about what she was going to do and go and execute that part. Remember, we, we spoke about people choose what they're going to execute and some chose that they were going to, going to go and do that, right? But the other thing is that, that that boils down to the next element when we talk about sales, right, which is concise communication. If, you're, if you teach your receptionist how to speak about you in three points, Okay, you are delivering and you are learning the art of concise communication without question. Mm-hmm. You'll, ha- you'll have to think about that and you'll have to think about how you articulate and you have to think about how he or she will articulate that back to you before they go and articulate it to a patient. Right. Mm-hmm. And then that comes down to if we if, if we think about sales, well, I think one of the biggest areas of failure that I see amongst dentists, healthcare professionals is the waffle. Mm. It's literally falling over your feet, talking about the detail, the material, the tooth's made out of, justifying which lab you use when they don't even really need to know. The <laughs> process for teeth whitening, Payman bangs on about it. It's like you don't go through the entire sequence of teeth whitening. No. They don't need to know no. the name of the technician making it, what the tray's made out of. I do a little bit of um, business coaching for, for some clients for their practices, right? And I talk about front stage and backstage. Okay. So... In business, we have front stage processes and backstage processes. There are backstage processes that that patient should never, ever learn about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
um, backstage and, and front stage processes and, and stuff that you need to shout about, right? So if I, just just take take one example, right? Is that jazz only works in this practice on a Tuesday and a Thursday, so you can only book him on a Tuesday and a Thursday. So do you want this Tuesday or that Thursday? Oh, and he's getting he's, he's getting married next week, and he's going to be off for a, for a few weeks, and so that's the reason he can't see you, right? Nobody needs to know that. And there's loads of examples of backstage conversations that I've heard that do not need to be delivered to that patient, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jazz is incredibly busy. And over the next couple of months, I've got these couple of dates available. Which one would you like? So much more powerful and concise. And and yeah, absolutely. And and, and, and we're cutting out the waffle. And that happens on the phone. That happens in consultations. We want to make the communication concise. So one of the ways in which you can do that is remove all the backstage processes, how the tooth is made, what the whitening process is, all the rest of it, right? You'll get those patients who want to know, but they'll let you know they want to know. Or you'll Mm -hmm. figure it out in your people skills. I've got an engineer in the room, yeah? They want to know how the springs and the cogs and all the sprockets fit together, right? And you can, you can, you can deliver that. But get the essence of, look, this is your problem. These are the three ways I can fix it. This is the way I would recommend that would work best for you. And this is the investment level involved. Okay? And, and, and you've built the trust in everything. And then go into the detail if you want afterwards, right? And then yeah. reiterate that. But, but Jazz, yeah. your thoughts? Hey guys, a few weeks ago, you may remember we launched OBAB, Occlusion Basics and Beyond, the online course. And I've just been you know, blown away by the feedback we're getting. I'm just going to read a, a recent one out to you on April 23rd, 10.39 a.m. I mean, one of the reasons that I worked with Prav Solanke and the IAS Academy is I wanted to work with the best in the business in delivering an educational experience for delegates. So what I love about IAS, they already have mentorship forums already built up because what we don't want is to put on a course and not have anywhere a safe place, encrypted place, and just generally a safe environment to discuss cases, right? So IAS have this infrastructure set up already for all their orthodontic courses. And so now they've got the occlusion board. So when you join the course and you have a case to submit, you can submit it and we can mentor you throughout. So uh, mentorship was really important to us. And the way that now underneath each lesson, there's a comment section. So you can actually comment and interact. Me and Mahmoud daily are applying to the comments as you all learn together. But I just want to share this one comment by Dr. KC. Uh, this is brilliant, right? So she said, this is so great and what I've been craving for a long time. How weird am I? Back in dental school in the early 90s, occlusion was shrouded, shrouded, oh gosh, I don't know how to say this word, uh, shrouded uh, in mystery. Everything went quiet in cons when a Facebook came out in its special cushion. It's just brilliant to have things explained to us as a dentist rather than engineers or physicists. For me, Envelope of function was always mysterious, uh, as was guidance, but I feel really excited to get to work tomorrow and start seeing all this. Thank you, guys. Fantastic. So that's the feedback we had at the last lecture of module one. So module one is our introductory module. We have five modules of OBAB. So it's just amazing. So thank you so much, Dr. Casey. And there's loads of feedback and comments that we're getting. Uh, so I just want to share that with you guys. So if you guys are ready to learn occlusion online with me and my mood in the IAS Academy, head over to occlusion.online. I, I think it's spot on because we don't make a recommendation enough or uh, a classic example uh, that a young dentist or lots of dentists doesn't have to be young dentists. Uh, it's just the ones I speak to on Instagram nowadays. They say, my patient needs a crown. They actually say it to me that, you know, patient really needs a crown here because uh, it's all the, all the textbook features of thin cusps and it's broken down. There's only, you know, uh, there's only a certain size a, a filling a restoration can be mm-hmm. before it's really not appropriate for that tooth anymore. It's a simple thing to grasp. Most dentists know this. But when they're communicating, okay, we can do a crown, which can cost X, or we can do a filling, which can cost X. Uh, the filling involves this, this process. The crown involves that process. Uh, which one would you like? And, and, and really, what you've skipped out, what you missed is a good comparison would be if someone's got caries in their teeth, yeah. decay, tooth decay. Hmm. And so we're, we're, most dentists are very confident to say that, okay, you need a filling. Right. And then you're not going to say, well, you need a filling or we can just, you know, put some fluoride varnish and, 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 and see you in six months. Right. We don't say that because we know yeah. that's not appropriate for that tooth. It is technically an option. Right. A very minimally invasive, negligent kind of option, maybe. Uh, mm. But you don't say it. So in the same way, dentists need that uh, confidence that actually this is my recommendation. You need this because X, Y, Z. And a great tip that Lincoln Harris gave me, which really echoes what you says, Prav, in terms of being concise, is 
the three sentence treatment plan. Like you need to, okay, first we're going to whiten your teeth, then we're going to lengthen them using invisible filling material, and then we're going to protect it with a splint. This is the way we're going to treat you. It will take four appointments and the total fee will be this. And that covers everything. Hmm. Pause, okay? And then uh, suss out the patient in terms of how much detail. Obviously, you're going to back it up with your written estimate because, you know, anything over a certain amount, you need to really give them more information. Patients deserve more information, but that doesn't have to happen in the surgery. So that's what I'm thinking. Make a recommendation. In fact, the GDC, no matter which country you're in, your regulatory body says, make a recommendation. People skim over that, but we can and should be making a recommendation. Yeah, yeah it, it says it in the GDC. You should make a recommendation. Mm-hmm. And, and and it is and, and we go back to well how do you earn the right to make that recommendation you earn it by building trust with that patient mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay and lots of us lots of practitioners have been building trust over many years and months and and, and, and decades for some some dentists because they've been seeing the patients every six months every 12 months and and so the level of trust is way up there however a patient that walks in off an Instagram inquiry, the level of trust is way down there and you've got to build that trust before you make that recommendation. And then how do you build that trust, right? It's, it, it, it's, it's that rapport building, it's understanding their situation, it's what Kerry did for me beforehand, it's me articulating to the patient that Kerry's passed on this information for me and I understand that you've been for a consultation here and one of the things that you didn't like is whatever, right? And, and I'm going to make sure that that isn't an issue here for you and, and, and so on and so forth, right? You build that trust. There, there, there's usually a human connection on that in, in that point. There's social proof. In the last podcast, we talked about inviting our previous patients into the consultation, right? Be that a before and after, be that a Google review that you've printed out or be that a video testimonial that you, you print out and say, hey, you know, John, I'd love you to meet Mike. Now, Mike was one of my patients who, same situation like you, years of unfortunately not looking after his teeth, lost them, they become loose. He ended up wearing these, these partial dentures and he wouldn't go out. He wouldn't socialize, you know, and, you know, and he felt very, 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 very upset about his, his situation. He was in pain. He couldn't eat the foods he wanted. And uh, just, just, just watch his video and, and see what you think. Um, and let me know if there's any similarities with you. Boom. That, that, that video's dealt with the objections. It's built the trust. The, 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 there's a connection between me and that patient because I treated that patient. I can do the same for you. Um, so we've built that trust. Now it's time for me to come in and make a recommendation for you. And I'm in your situation. Look, there's, there's very little we can salvage here. And, and you know, all things being, being equal, you know, I, I recommend that you go for this option. And that's what the level of investment that, you, that, that you're looking for is. And yeah, you know, with different patient groups or jazz you spoke about values there's a certain value you need to go off above and then they need a written treatment plan and they need this letter and all the rest of it there's probably a regulatory reason as well that you need to document everything and put everything in writing right absolutely Um, but once again you know the way i've spoke about how do you deliver the communication now right it's the same thing in the written word okay how do you deliver a letter Does your letter go into so much detail? I've seen treatment plans this thick. But you know why that is, right? Go on. The, the letter, and this is, you know, something Corey Ferran taught me. He, he's prolific for doing the, like the best letters ever. Like, you know, he's he, he, the best, very detailed, very thick wads, basically. And I don't know if he's changed his process and, and hat tip to, to Corey Ferran for all he does in dentistry. Mm. But he, he says that, look, this letter, yeah, the patient, I want them to read it and understand it. But really, it's, it's, it's for the lawyers. It's, 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 it's for the patient, but it's also written for the lawyers as well. So everything is, is, is foolproof. So that's an element of, you know, the regulatory body being satisfied and then you uh, leave no stone unturned by listing all the risks and benefits because technically, you know, we see the charge sheets of dentists in trouble. You did not state all the risks and benefits. So we feel dentists like, okay, it will take five hours in the chair to do it. But if you just print off this uh, 25 page booklet that that covers to some degree of it. And, and, you know, we know consent is very complicated. Consent has layers like an onion. You know, we we talked about that in a previous episode. But (laughs) but, but I think that's why we're satisfying the regulatory body as well. But, Okay, have you what? Okay, mm-hmm. but the first two pages. Yes, should the be executive a, summary. It should be a thing of beauty. Yes, agreed. Of, of, That's of conciseness, lovely. Conciseness, bulleted information, whatever that is, and and 
Look, I've, I've spoke to what, what, one of the things that I, I'll speak to a new client about is take me through your patient journey, right? And part of that patient journey, let's, let's get to the point where you're delivering the consultation, right? So everything's happened before that. Your patient journey, you've delivered the consultation and now that patient needs a treatment plan. Can you explain to me how you deliver the treatment plan to the patient? The differences between how dentists deliver treatment plans, and I'm not just talking about their verbal skills or their sales skills, but actually the methodology of delivery, yeah, the, the <laughs> means of whether it's a FedEx or a DPD or an email or, or, or whatever, right? The, the, the method yeah. of delivery is very different. Inconsistent. Even amongst the practice, every associate will do it differently, right? And even that dentist himself or herself will do <laughs> yes, it inconsistently, yes, yes, yes. right? Guilty yeah. as charged. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so then we, but then we look at okay. Well, let, let's just forget about inconsistency within and think about inconsistency across the industry, right? Some dentists will do a PDF and email it to the patient and cross their fingers and toes. Mm -hmm. Some dentists will get the patient back and present the treatment plan to the patient and, and book in what's called a letter chat or, or a treatment plan. That's something over. that I do quite a bit with my bigger cases, yes. Mm. Some will ask another team member to just, you know, just, just, just get this over to the patient. Some, it will go out by, you know, Royal Mail or whatever in the post, yeah? To the in patient. a gold envelope with perfume on it. <laughs> Wax seal, whatever, right? And, and, and so... There are numerous different ways in which treatment plans can be delivered. But the interesting thing is when I sit down and ask that dentist and say, so you've emailed that treatment plan. What's if it went into spam? What's your contingency for that plan? And then that same rabbit in the headlights moment, right? And, and, and some will say, oh, but we phone the patients afterwards to see if they've got it. Okay, cool. What's if it went to voicemail? Mm -hmm. How many times would you phone that patient? Would you text that patient? Would you email that patient? Have you told the patient you're expecting, you, you, I'm going to write to you and it will be on this day? And no, because your life is so busy that you actually don't even know when you're going to get that treatment plan out. That's a common, mm -hmm. common problem for, for dentists that I see is that, oh, Tuesday nights I'm doing my treatment plans, doing my treat oh, I haven't quite got around to this, right? I'm going to get this treatment plan out tomorrow. I'm going to do it the next, all oh, right, I'll do it next Tuesday now. And time passes, right? You've done all the hard work in building the trust and everything. You just need to get this out. Patient gets cold. And mm -hmm. then, and then, and then where, where, where do you go with that? One of the most successful ways, I think, of delivering treatment plans in the easiest way to do it, we'll explain this, is, by, is, is maximizing your output, but minimizing your time. So I'm liking yeah, where I this is going. I think the goal, I think I'll tell you where I'm going. The gold standard is you get the patient in and you block out time in your diary. Okay. Yeah. And you get the paper, but, but that, that requires a lot of time and energy, right? But recording, and, and Jazz, I know you're a, you're a loom fanatic as I, as am Huge. I. Yeah. You know, I, I record probably about 20 to 40 loom videos a day. And I know you do, you, you do a lot as well, Jazz. And I find it an amazing way of communication. And for those of you who don't know what loom is, it is a piece of software that is essentially either free or if you want the premium version, it's £10 or something like that a month. It's so cheap. It's, you know, the, it, web, the website, I, I, I love it so much, <coughs> I actually bought loom.dental. And basically, it's, it's my affiliate code, basically, because I just I'm recommend everyone, just go to loom.dental. Uh, yeah. you know, yeah. I think everyone, every dentist use it. <laughs> loom.dental, there you go, right? Um, <laughs> and buy it. And, 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 oh, but try, try it out for free first, right? Try it out for free. I don't think there's a single reason why you wouldn't buy it, but, but you've got to execute, right? So, so just explain for those dentists who, 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 yeah, you're going to explain what it is, right? Yeah, How it's yeah. actually used. Yep. Yeah. So what Loom is, is a piece of software. You press a button on, on, on your browser, Chrome or whatever it is, and it records your screen. At the same time, it records your voice. And if you've got a webcam, it can record your face and you can put your face anywhere on that page you want. Yeah. You can stick it in the corner, here, there, wherever. You can make it bigger, smaller, whatever, right? And I think when you're delivering a treatment plan, now picture this, your treatment plan's there. You can wave your mouse around on the screen. You could annotate the screen and you are there in your, just sort of your personality, right? And you're saying to that patient, okay, Prav, it was an absolute pleasure to meet you a couple of days ago. So from, you know, the conversation that we had um, and the problems that you're experiencing, the key problems being A, B, and C, um, I've got three key ways in which I can help you. And here's option one. And you've got a picture of their teeth on the screen. You wave your mouse around and go, oh, this is what we can do with this. And this is what we can do with that. And you say, for this solution, this is how many appointments, and this is what it's going to cost. For this solution, this is... Now, I'm going to send you the rest of this document as well, 
which has got all the detail about the risks and the blah, 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 and all the rest of it, right? And I'm going to send you a PDF of that. Once you've received this video and watched it, just tell me that you want the PDF. So I know you've you've received this video and I will email the PDF to you. Mm -hmm. It creates a touch point. It creates an interaction. Creates an interaction. And why am I not sending the PDF directly? A, I want engagement. B, I want mm -hmm. to know they've watched the video, although Loom will tell me that. So that anyway. saved me before, you know, that I love the fact that, you know, when someone, when a patient watches my loom, I'll get an email saying, you know, Mr. Smith has opened, has watched your video. And for, like, imagine if you start doing it to, in the way that I do it, you know, my consent process is like, you know, you need to know this, really important for consent. And I'll talk a little bit more about consent in a moment. But like, if they haven't seen that, they, for me, they haven't consented. Because sometimes I go over a compromise option. Okay, what we're doing is very fringe, very compromise. And therefore, you need to understand everything. So if they haven't seen that video, I know that that doesn't satisfy my consent level. So mm. I, I like the medical legal so sort of aspect of it and just like you mentioned uh, Prav with, with consent how you said in your loom you're put to pretend loom to the patient as you were describing it saying I'm, I'm going to send you this pdf I think consent has to be individual right for that patient sure. right yeah your individual risk so so there might be 50 different risks of a line of treatment but there's one or two which is really significant for that patient and the loom allows me to go okay there's about 50 risks but number 24 and number 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 48 are really relevant to you because you've bashed your tooth before there's something called resorption which can happen and so that's really important and your tooth could discolor blah 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 and you really really now individualize consent so you've got to uh, bear that in mind so that's why i love loom Hey guys, if you want to see an example Loom video that I've sent to one of my patients, if you're a Protrusive Premium member, you can find it in the Premium Clinical Video section. Because when I was editing this episode, I was thinking, hey, wouldn't it be useful for you guys to see an example Loom video discussing the patient's treatment suggestions, recommendations? So I've got that available to you. I know some of you asked for it on Instagram as well. So it'll be available for you in the Premium Clinical Video section of the Protrusive app. Obviously, you can access it by web, by Protrusive.com app or the app store uh, however you like but it's all there for you so if you want to check out an example go ahead some, some of the, the the features that we've probably not dug into that that i love about loom right is that when you send that link to the patient they click on it and out pops a video and it plays your recording the moment they play that recording and they stop playing that recording for whatever reason you get an email saying your loom video has just been watched by such a body, right? If they've got a Google account and they're logged into it, you get the details of who's watched it. The other important thing that you get is you get details on how much of it they've watched. Have they watched I didn't know that. A hundred percent of the video? Yeah. Or have they watched 60% of the video? A habit that I've got into is I label or rename all my loom videos. You're so, so anal. So that so that <laughs> I know when I get that email notification. So if I send you a loom, I'll put Jazz Gulati dash Obab course landing page, right? Uh -huh. So as soon as I get a notification pop up, I don't even need to know, right? I know straight away with a notification I get, Jazz has just watched that video about this that I sent him. Bosh, done. Because I've labeled all my video. The moment I, the moment I record the video, I retitle it. So the notification I get back tells me a story. Right, really simple. The other thing with Loom videos is if they watch it a second time, a third time, a fourth time, or a fifth time, you get that data. Yes, if somebody else watches it, it will tell you this Loom video has been watched by two people, three people, four mm -hmm, people. Mm -hmm. What are they doing now? They're sharing it with their friends and family members, getting an opinion, whatever that Which is. Which is key because you've essentially, you know, one of the things that was taught is that, you know, if, if, you, if you see a lady for, for, and you present a treatment plan and the lady happens to then uh, bring her husband to the next consultation, is a 99% accept, acceptance rate when the partner's there. It's just going to happen because it's A, they're serious. The partner's giving up their time. It's two people's time now and they're dead serious. They just want to iron out the details, right? So you are now inviting that other significant other or their family member or friend uh, to that consultation. And I think it's powerful, the shareability. You're, you're totally right. And, and, and then one, once again, I, th I think we could run an entire course on, on the Art of Loom presentations, right? <laughs> but, but another little sort of hack or a trick or call it whatever you want, right? You know, all of my, I call it treatment plans, right? But marketing proposals that I send out, they're done via Loom, okay? Now, if I'm speaking to one of the stakeholders and there's another business partner who couldn't make the initial sales call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And by the way, um, please do share this with Jazz. I know he wasn't here, um, but what's really important that he understands 
the other things that we discussed with so you can add color to your treatment plan you can yeah, add color yeah. to the words by voice right yes but but just talk about them invite them and, and 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 by the way jazz you know if you want to jump on a separate call with me if anything's not clear in what i've described today because you didn't have the context i'd be delighted to jump on a separate call with you right mm-hmm. and so in the same respect look i know you, you you're going to be sharing this with your with your other half your husband mr smith if you've, you've been smart enough you've got the name or whatever jack bob whatever yeah um, and bob look if anything here doesn't make a sense or you want a little bit more detail why don't you come back in with Brenda and we'll sit down and we'll go through it, right? So then that that's sort of little nuances and how you can tweak and, mm-hmm. and optimize the use of language in Loom. But I think it's a, it's a wonderful tool. If you're worried about security, you can password protect every Loom video with a separate password, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. So all my proposals I send out, I password protect them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I tell them what the password is. And, 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 and so why do I do that? First of all, they've got to jump through another hoop to access that Loom video, okay? Yeah. And the other thing I think about is if somebody accidentally just clicks on the video, starts playing it, but they're not in the mind frame or the, the, the headspace to watch the whole video, they'll watch 60% of it, right? But if I put a password in there, and, and, and one, one last bit of advice is I tell them how long the Loom video is in the message. Here's a four minute video I made for you, Mrs. Smith. Yeah. Link. Mm -hmm. So they know how much time they need to invest in watching it. Find the headspace, put the password in, off they go. And you know who's watched it. This is a very personalized way to do a letter. It's a a video letter. It's very personal. It's very shareable. It's very unique. And every single patient I've sent this to, they've always commented like, wow, you know, thank you for your thorough explanation. I really understand. No one's ever communicated with me Mm -hmm. in this way. That's why I've been been hooked on Loom. It's brilliant. Uh, Before we summarize uh, this episode, because I want to, you know, Patrice Rati messaged me saying, we like it, Jazz, when you just (laughs) go over the bullet points of, because sometimes uh, there's so much information overload. So we'll do that in just a moment. But is there any other point you want to make on the follow-up conversation because you mentioned okay things get lost they don't listen to voicemails and stuff and and that element is important no matter how you communicate that follow-up sequence any other comments you want to make on that we're, we're talking specifically about treatment plans right and and, and, and yes. how, how how we can be following up with that or how we should be following up with that right so once we've earned the right uh, and the trust to make a recommendation, we've made a recommendation. That recommendation is going to be concise. And it's also a treatment plan that the nurse, the nurse and the reception team are already familiar with. You are known in your practice for delivering that treatment plan because you've had those conversations with the front of house. Mm-hmm. And now you send that treatment plan out via, let's say, uh, loom.dental or any other way that you want, your written one, any way you like, basically. Uh, and then so uh, what other tips and advice that perhaps I haven't mentioned here just now that we glossed over? Or the microphone is yours, my friend. Well, I think, you know, we could we could talk at length. We could do a whole another episode about the, the nuances of the conversation that happen when you're delivering that treatment plan, how to talk money, how to break money down into lowest common dom- dom- denominators, how to talk to them about access accessing funds, right? Really important. I'm going to mention this, and I might get a bit of stick for it, right? But my colleague, um, Mark Northover, is probably one of the most emotionally intelligent human beings I have ever come across in my life, right? And, and he'll be embarrassed about me saying this. Most of the communication stuff I learn, a lot of the communication stuff I learn is eavesdropping on him speaking to patients in our clinic. Wow. And, and, and the words that come out of his mouth are a thing of beauty, and it's not through any sales training, it's just nothing like NLP, nothing like that. It's none just of that crap. Him. I'm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't yeah. say that, but 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 none, <laughs> none of that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's none of this contrived. I need to do this. They looked up to the right. They scratched their nose. They did none of that nonsense, right? It really does come down to the fact that he is just a people person. He communicates concisely and he connects with patients in a way that I have not seen other healthcare professionals connect with patients, right? It's, it's just purely that. And in our clinic, we do a lot of same-day teeth, full arch implant dentistry, call it, that's, that, that's placed on the same day, and it's very high-value stuff. And so I listened to Matt talk to patients, and we had this patient who'd failed finance, and we had another one who had a deposit, and, 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 and they had the means to pay the finance, but they'd failed or whatever, right? Matt's a problem solver. He really is. So you think at this point, I'm going to give you the solution now, and then, and then you're going to think flipping egg, but then, then we'll go back to the definition of what sales is, right? And I know Matt, what you're going to say. You told me a story before, so you, uh, get, everyone get your mandibles ready because it's going to drop. <laughs> Mark 
asked this patient to remortgage their house to pay for their implants. Okay. But it's <laughs> that, 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 that's the shock statement, right? Yeah. Yep. But actually, when I asked Mark, I said, Mark, I've never, ever heard anyone ask a patient to remortgage their house to pay for their teeth. What, like, where did that come from? And he said, Prav, this patient really wanted this treatment. Mm -hmm. They just needed to understand where their possible sources of funding are. Yeah. So we have finance. We have money in the bank. I yeah. asked, are you a homeowner? Have you got equity in that house? I think the cheapest access to money, maybe you need to speak to your broker, would be to perhaps just take some money some equity out of your house. And that could be a way. And you know what? The patient was absolutely delighted and over the moon that he'd made that suggestion because neither another dentist nor that patient would have ever thought about that solution. And that patient is super happy, eating their steak, smiling, in a great relationship. I've seen the video testimonial of this patient. He yeah. looks great and he's so happy, you could tell. Yeah. So look, you know, access to funding. I think that, that, that that's where we're going. But we, we spoke about follow-up. And what's really, what's really important about follow-up, right, is that the patient who comes in and has a treatment plan from you today, Jazz, may be ready to proceed with treatment tomorrow, may be ready to proceed with treatment in three months, may be ready to proceed with treatment in 12 months or two years' time. Mm -hmm. And that's the long and short of it, right? We have slow, middle, and fast lane bias in, 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 in my dictionary, right? And so... Those patients who are ready to transact in two years, but not today, we can either view them as time wasters or we can see them as patients that are not quite ready to transact yet, but let's stay in touch, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so there's numerous different ways in which you can do that through emails, newsletters, sharing case studies and success stories every couple of months, giving them a quick call and saying, hey, Prav, I know now's not the right time. Do you know what? Level with that patient. Right, Because if you have built that trust and you have made that recommendation and that patient feels comfortable enough to tell you, Prav, not now, but when the time's right, I ain't going anywhere else. I ain't yeah, going yeah. anywhere else, right? And then you turn around to that patient and say, is it okay if I just give you a call every couple of months? See how you're doing. Share a few case studies with you that we've completed that we're proud of. Would that be okay? Yeah, Absolutely. So we've got our follow-up sequence, and then you can either do that through some kind of CRM system. You can have a spreadsheet, a Google sheet, whatever, right? Maybe ask ChatGPT to tell you the best way to do it. <laughs> but yeah, I but hope perhaps I'll, I'll tell you something I do, actually, uh, which is very uh, on that same vein, hmm. uh, is patients who I've made a, a treatment plan for that in my heart of hearts, I think they'd really benefit from, but it's a lot more than what they expected. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're interested, but maybe this is not the best year for them. I, 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 you know, well, I see him for the checkup six months later uh, and I said, oh, remember we had that conversation? Is that something that you're you know, still interested in? And they say, yes, but you know, maybe now's not the time. I said, listen, when you're ready, I'll be ready. And then the one, this one sentence, which I think dentists should be saying we don't say enough, is that I love doing this kind of work. I let them know I love doing this kind of work. That one sentence, and I, I know that's not a tactic. That's not a thing. No, but no, no. I generally do love that work. And I, I, you know, when they are ready then, a, I've, I've, I've been sympathetic to the scenario, empathetic. Like, hey, when you're ready, I'll be ready. But also, you know what? I bloody love it. And they'll want to go to someone who, who loves doing that kind of work. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and I think we've covered all the, all the key elements that, that, that we wanted to. I mean, I'm sure there's a few missing pieces to the puzzle that, that, that we Prab, have. Prab, we, we obviously need to learn more from you. You did a, a one-day thing for these reconstruction dentists. You also did a one-day, just, you know, your, the elevator pitch for the dentists and how to get change their mindset. Because ultimately, everything we talked about is underpinned by mindset, right? And sure. so the way we think about sales, the, the workflows in your practice, are you doing any more of these training days? I do have some coming up. So with, with in collaboration with the IS Academy, I've got two courses coming up this year. Um, I think the dates for one of them has been set, but they've, they've not gone live yet. So one of them is um, a TCO course. And I think, you know, what I wanted to put together is a TCO course that's non-clinical. I ain't going to teach you how to take photographs. I'm going to teach you how to scan and I'm going to teach you how to look in a patient's mouth. But I'll teach you how to communicate in the best possible way to get that patient over the line, right? Yeah. And call that, you know, we, let, let's just call that sales. Mm -hmm. And then another course that, that, that we were speaking about at the Academy um, that will go live this year is one called Phone School. 
and phone school is is pretty Love much the name. It's it, it's a Ron Seal statement, right? It does what it says on the tin, um, and 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 it's the art of, of conversations on the phone. What the ideal sales call looks like, what the ideal customer service call looks like, what the objections sound like on the phone, and then we're just designing now sort of the workflow of the course but what, what, what one of the things we're talking about is the delegates that register some of them will have the opportunity to allow us to record calls coming into their practice mm-hmm. live mystery feedback shopper. and we but, but instead of a mystery shopper we're going to play those calls back in front of the whole audience and coach them on them yeah. um yeah and and we will also probably do a couple of um live calls to some of the delegates practices during the course to get some instant sort of feedback right instant red faces and, and, yeah, but, but, but do you know what those that this is the way i look at it those that volunteer to have their practices call it exposed right because look if you call my practice today i guarantee you that the, the, the we'll make some mistakes as well yeah we, we, we're all always improving right they'll get the most out of the course They'll get their mm-hmm. personalized, direct advice, right? And, and, and you know, what, what I like to say is that the environment in which I do this will be a safe environment, you know, where everyone would be encouraged to share and learn and, 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 and whatnot, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, and like-minded people in a room for, for, for one purpose, which is, you know, to get better at communicating, right? I, th- I think that is, you know, it... it it's certainly communication, you know, as, as well as having the skills to, you know, stick the drill in the right place and all the mm-hmm. other bits and pieces is, is, you know, it's the thing that's going to get you out of trouble. It's the thing that's going to get you the patient to say yes. It's the thing that's going to get that patient to bring the friends and family members it's, and, 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 and all the rest of it, right? So, uh, Well, I'll, I'll put the links and the, and the dates and show notes, but you need to do something again for dentists. I don't think you, you, you do that enough. I know you're a super busy guy, but if you're up for it, let, let's get something uh, organized for, for dentists. Loom school. <laughs> I love that. Actually, people will actually find that really valuable. We should consider I, that. I, I, um, I think Loom School. I, I, I'm evangelical about Loom because I think it's I, it's one of the tools that, has, in my even my agency, has saved me days every month. Because when you're recording a screen and you're pointing at something and you're saying, "Move this here, do that there," or even communicating via voice rather than typing, saves me a ton of time. I also have mm-hmm. accountability because I know that person's watched it. Brad, honestly, uh, no, no, no. We, 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 we all love Loom here. So uh, for those of you who hadn't discovered Loom before, now's your time to check it out. We covered a lot of ground here. Thank you so much, Proud. We talked about being concise. We talked about doing it in, in, in a way that the, the patient will, will understand, doing it do in a way so that your team are on board, different ways of communicating uh, and just changing your mindset about the definition of sales. Mm. So I will reach out to you, try and twist your arm to actually do some live training for dentists again. I'll get you, get you back on that. I know Brilliant. you're a beggar busy, but man, thank you so much for, for making time. I really appreciate it, Proud. Pleasure, Jazz. Thanks for having me. Really enjoyed it today. Well, there we have it, guys. Thank you so much for listening all the way to the end. I mean, there was a lot of different themes covered here, which is why we have the executive one-page summary for all Protrusive Premium members to download. And of course, you can also answer some questions to get your CPD. Why not, right? I don't think we do enough CBD in the non-clinical stuff. So I think this will be golden. So if you want to answer some questions, get your certificate, please do that on the Protrusive app as well. And of course, if you like the idea of Loom, check out loom.dental and make a video, you know, make a practice video. I think for free, you can use it. It's like a five minute limit. Uh, A lot of my videos end up being more than five minutes, which is why I pay, I don't know, like 70 bucks a whole year to make unlimited videos. It's also how I communicate with the protrusive team through Loom videos. So thanks so much for listening all the way to the end. Check out loom.dental. But lastly, if you want to learn from Prav, I believe he's got some courses at the end of the year for dentists, 2023, December, but also the the one for TCOs and phone calls, etc. So I'll put that all in the show notes for you to check out how you can learn more from that man, Prav Solanke. Thank you again. I'll catch you in the next episode.